everybody. Welcome to the Cincy Junior Sabbath School Show. My name is Stacy, and we're on Lesson 9 for both PowerPoint and Cornerstone Lessons. Before we start the lesson, please, if you don't have, if you don't have copies of the Sabbath School books, you can find them at www.juniorpowerpoint.org or cornerstoneconnections.org. I hope we can get a chapter back. The title of the PowerPoint lesson is Christ Works. Mm -hmm. The project is found in 1 Peter 1, verse 18 to 19, which reads, for you know that it was not worth perishable things such as silver gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of bringing you down to the summer and your precious blood besides a land without blemish or uh, defect. Also, the title for the part for the cornerstone lessons is Never Alone. He checks me on the first king, 17 to 6, which reads, It shall be with that you drink from the blood, and I have commanded, he said, the ravens to provide for you there, so he watched want and did the Lord. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in, 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 in the evening, and would drink from the rock. Thank you very much for joining us, and I hope we stay tuned for the PowerPoint course of less discussions. God bless you. Guys, welcome back to the Junior Sabaski Show. My name is Rajoyce, and I'm gonna be the host for today's discussion. And um, today we're on lesson line, just like Daisy said. I have Abigail and Marianne with me today, and I have our special guest joining Tuesday. Um, can you please introduce yourself to us, please, Pastor? Okay, thank you for joining us today, Pastor. We really appreciate it. So, we're gonna go straight into our lesson for PowerPoint. I'm gonna ask Abigail to give us a summary, a quick summary. In the lesson, um, it happened that. Jesus was on a mountain or like in a gathering place with people around him. And uh, he taught about the kingdom of heaven coming down on earth. And the people didn't understand quite what he was saying. They thought that it would be like um, a rebellion against the oppressive Romans. But actually, it's more like, uh, and he used, he used analogies to compare what he was saying. And it's more like if a farmer or like if a merchant sees a specific pearl that he wants so badly, he'll sell everything that he has to get it. And that's like, um, that puts in perspective what the kingdom of God is going to be like. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Abigail, for the quick summary. And on to our discussion panel. Our first point is, uh, according to our heat test, why did God send Jesus to die for our sin? And what does this tell us about how precious our life is to him, Abigail? Well, Jesus, Jesus was sent uh, to die for, for our sins because he loves us so much, because God loves us so much. Mm -hmm. And this tells us like his, our lives, are worth so much to him that he was willing to die for us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you for your input. What do you think, Maria? Um, that I mean a lot to him, and maybe I should let go of my old sins okay. just for him. 
Okay. Um, what is that thought on that question, Pastor? Uh, okay, thank you for your input. Moving on to the next discussion point, um, it says Jesus gave two different analogy of how the kingdom of God will be like. So with that understanding, what analogy can you give to describe the kingdom of heaven to someone? There you go. Um, well, in Jesus' analogy, he would always say something that was like so uh, valuable mm-hmm. that people were willing to sell everything they had mm-hmm. to get it. So in today's life, maybe uh, personally, like... A book of test answers or something like that <laughs> that'll get you through every test in your life forever and you're willing to sell everything for that mm. for me though i'll be like well i would say in tiktok famous because i feel like nowadays everyone want to do anything to be tiktok famous so with that that's being tiktok famous is like going to heaven right you do everything and you um, sacrifice everything to get to heaven if you want to be TikTok famous, you will sacrifice a lot of things to be famous. That is my analogy of how heaven is going to be like. Nguyen, what do you think? Maybe like Wonderland. Mm. Like everything that you wonder or like think about, it's, it's, it's possible. Mm. Yeah. So Wonderland. Okay, okay Wonderland. That's, that's interesting. What's your thought on it, Pastor? Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Thank you for sharing. So the last point that we wanted to discuss over the PowerPoint says that God has chosen each one of us to be his treasured obsession. So how does this realization that God treasures you changes the way you look at life? What do you think, Abigail? I think it changes like the perspective of set of um, working to please other people. Mm-hmm. Rather, work to please God or, like, everything um, everything that matters to me should matter to me, like, because of God. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Thank you for sharing. For me, if I, when I think of the term that God, I'm um, God's treasured obsession, I feel like it's kind of, like, interesting. Like, I don't think, like, imagine God treasuring your life. That's, like, really interesting, like, concept. So, for me, I think when I think of that, kind of like statement it makes me feel like i have somebody out there like god who takes over me and have my best interest when the physical human beings do not have it what do you think about the question yeah it makes me feel like i'm very special because out of all the what a billion billion. billion now Uh uh-huh god just sometimes like wow i wonder what marion is doing right and then he just takes a peek 
And then he just looks, makes me. And you're watching him? Yeah, it makes me feel so special. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Um, what's your thought on the question, Pastor? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Right? It, yeah. I think it sounds really good to put it in that way. And it kind of reminds me of a song that I recently listened to. And in that song, it says, my God. And I've never really thought more about that word, my God. But that's, like, really interesting to, like, you know, he's my God. That's, like, a really interesting way to put it. So this will, will conclude the PowerPoint part of today's discussion. And we want to be on that soon. I'm going to ask Miriam to give us a quick, brief summary. Okay, so this lesson was about Elijah and how God told him to go tell King Ahab that they would not have rain for many years. So then God told him to run. So he ran and then he went to a place with a brook, like water coming out. But the brook dried up because there was no rain. So then God told him to go to a widow and that the widow there would take care of him. So Elijah found the widow and asked the widow, oh, can you please make me some bread? And she said, no, because this is the last bread that I'm going to make for me and my sons to die. And then Elijah told him that surely that my God lives, your your flour and your oil will never be exhausted. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mary, for the really good summary. I really like the story of Elijah, but I feel like um, it's a really good story. It's showcased having courage and faith in God, which I think every Christian needs to develop that kind of faith and courage in that. So we're gonna um hop on a few questions that I came up with that we can talk about. So the first one is how did God show us how how does God sorry, how did God show Elijah that he could always be there for him? Period. Um when like when the brook when the brook dried up or whatever mm -hmm. he found another place for him to go to yeah and then say that place if the widow if the widow you know her pot stopped making the flower mm -hmm. God would have another place for him so God had you know a lot of I guess places lined up for Elijah to go to mm -hmm. whenever anything over there was exhausted mm -hmm. okay okay Abigail do you have something to add to that um, I think that like. Elijah himself, he was like a really dedicated man of God. He mm -hmm. really dedicated himself to God. Mm -hmm. And like, even he was sent up to heaven. He didn't have to die like right. that. Like right? <laughs> so lucky. <like> he... <laughs> and he like followed God with everything that he had. Yeah. He knew God. Like he was like, God was his friend, basically. Um, he really like walked with God instead of just like knowing God exists, but not really putting anything into it. Mm -hmm. And I think that, like, the relationship that he had with God let him know that, if anything, he can trust in God. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing. I like how you said that he know God, like, had a relationship with God, and so just, you know, knowing God is, like, a two different thing. What's your thought on the question, Pastor? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you for sharing. So as um the story goes, it took courage for um the widow to feed Elijah when she barely had enough food for herself and her son, right? So how can we establish that courage in our life, you know? For that lady, he didn't really have anything in his... Well, he did have something, but it wasn't enough to give it to other people, right? But he wasn't really willing to do it. But when Elijah was like, go back and look, and you have like a lot of things. Elijah had that courage to tell the lady that, the lady that go back and there'll be more. What if he went back and there's really nothing in there? Like, what would happen? So like the question is, does God still do things like that in modern day? 
like if so what incest do you know like in a way that kind of like provided for you or like for somebody in like a really spectacular way i'm just gonna share like a i'm gonna share a little like example okay. some people were like he needed money right mm-hmm. but then when he was going he found money on the floor Oh, right, that kind of like thing you know, God provided when he really didn't think there would be like a way to get money. So that like, God, God provided something like that. So have that ever okay. happened to you or? Okay, I said maybe for me, like I was supposed to take a test in mm-hmm. math class and then the teacher, I guess the teacher, I guess she realized that we just didn't get it. So she was like, you know what? I'm going to do it with you guys. <laughs> wow. Well, so then she got up on the board and then she did some of this. But she let us do some of it, but like the majority of it, though, okay. she did. So oh, okay. almost all the class passed. So. Okay, wow, wow. Okay, that's nice. Abigail, do you have something? like? Um, I have something similar. Mm-hmm. It was also a test. Like, okay. I was so nervous for this test because I didn't study for it in advance. Uh-huh. I mean, I had so much other stuff going on <laughs> that I didn't even have time to. Uh-huh. And then even on the, the like the morning before the test, I looked it over a little bit. I realized that I didn't know two out of the four concepts that we're supposed to know. Uh-huh. And then I just quickly reviewed it. And then I sat on the test and I got a 99. Oh, and wow. I was so shocked. <laughs> wow. Well, we thank God for that. I'm also going to give an example for another example of my friend. He, she said that on the exam day, she really didn't know the concept, right? But she forgot about, like, the whole thing. And she was, like, praying to God that something should happen because she knows, like, the concept, but she just forgot. Then right there, there was a fire alarm. And the, and, the, and the professor was like, you know, fire alarm, you really cannot stay in school. So when the fire alarm rang, they all went out and you go out, you have your phone, right? So then she go go there. So she was like, I now I remember. So then they went back inside and they continued the exam and she did good on it. So I think that would be another thing that shows how God provides for us when we think there is no way. Do you have some similar situation, Pastor, that you want to share with us today? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you for sharing. Um, as we can see, God definitely does provide for us in times of need. So whatever you have on your heart, whatever that you need God to do, just pray to God and he will definitely do it for you. And also, when you pray, believe in it because you cannot pray and not believe. That will not work. So pray and believe in it and it will happen. But before we leave, Pastor, do you mind giving us a life lesson that we can get from both the PowerPoint and the Pastor discussion? Okay.
Okay, thank you, Pastor, for the life lesson. I hope our viewers and also Asia can take something out of it. But before we go, I want to thank Hope TV. Ghana for similar shows. I want to thank Obra um, TV and TV Radio for similar shows on our on their part. Our show is also streamed on our own since night again is a church YouTube page and also our Facebook page. So if you can tune it into that, it would be great. And while you are there, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. And before we go, Pastor, can you pray for us to end today's discussion? Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for joining us for today's discussion. Thank you to Abigail and Miriam for today's discussion. Tune in next week, which is lesson 10. Bye.